Hi folks, thanks for watching my monologue. As America starts to reopen, just remember that guns, etc., never closed. They still have over 10,200 square feet of ammo, firearms, and accessories, including safes, and they remain open for business. Stop by their huge store in Mesa or just click on gunsetc.com. And if you like my monologues, please subscribe to 960 The Patriot's YouTube channel. Thanks. Welcome back and happy June 10th, 2020. As you know, I've been long opposed to the roiling waves attempted to shock, shock waves that go against our ship of state and much more focused on the ship itself, the people in it, the attempt to find calm waters for it. Put a lot of the blame for the distractions and the roiling on social media and cable news, the sirens, the flashing lights, the breaking news memes that recycle the same story that's been on and out for hours, that everything Trump does or says is a crisis and requires a crisis-like response. The ratcheting up of rhetoric, horrible. The ability for only one side to be incensed at injustices or per perceived injustices, horrible, hypocritical, a dual standard, not healthy for a democracy. Let's think on that last thing for a moment, shall we? If there's a crisis, a constitutional crisis, or to the Democrats in Armageddon, you know, a tantrum or maelstrom of hyperventilating, what is the appropriate, if not required, crisis-like response? Well, some of the Democrats have an idea, or had one, impeachment. If that fails, censorship. If that fails, lockdowns. If that fails, racism. But there's racism and there's racism, isn't there? Somehow, in the wake of George Floyd's homicide, we are supposed to find healing in the preachings of Al Sharpton. Somehow, we are to oppose racism by listening to Al Sharpton. Do people know the record of Al Sharpton and what his name means to a lot of other Americans, including the Jewish community? Listen to this. I quote, Al Sharpton has referred to members of the Jewish faith as blood-sucking Jews and Jew bastards. The Reverend Al Sharpton has referred to members of the Jewish faith as white interlopers and diamond merchants. The Reverend Al Sharpton was found guilty of defamation by a jury in New York court arising from the false accusation that former Assistant District Attorney Stephen Pagonis, who is white, raped and assaulted a 15-year-old black girl. The Reverend Al Sharpton has refused to accept responsibility and expresses no regret for defaming Mr. Pagonis. The Reverend Al Sharpton's vicious verbal anti-Semitic attacks directed at members of the Jewish faith, and in particular a Jewish landlord, arising from a simple landlord-tenant dispute with a black tenant, incited widespread violence, riots, and the murder of five innocent people. The Reverend Al Sharpton's fierce demagoguery incited violence, riots, and the murder in the Crown Heights section of Brooklyn, New York, following the accidental death of a black pedestrian child hit by the motorcade of an Orthodox rabbi. The Reverend Al Sharpton led a protest in that Crown Heights neighborhood and marched next to a protester with a sign that read, The White Man is the Devil. The Reverend Al Sharpton has insulted members of the Jewish faith by challenging Jews to violence and stating to Jews to, quote, pin down their yarmulkes. Those are direct quotes from a motion in Congress to censure, not censor, censure Al Sharpton some years back. Who authored the quotes? Who put together the censure? Who wrote them? Who sponsored the resolution? Joe Scarborough. Yes, that one. Anyone ask him lately if he's gotten over all that or if he just doesn't care anymore? And while at it, are we supposed to overcome racism, finding healing in the memory of George Floyd when Louis Farrakhan's organization is thanked at his funeral for providing security? Is racism only important against one group in this country? When Democrats like Nancy Pelosi don the kente cloth in sympathy with Americans, or perhaps just Africans, does it mean a single thing when she says and does nothing about bigots and Holocaust revisionists in her own party like Ilan Omar and Rashida Tlaib? It's hard, we are told and are told, to fight and hate bigotry with hate and bigotry. Is it not? So today, the inmates run the asylum. Thus, as Tom Cromwell says in A Man for All Seasons, I show you the times. But rest, settling, calm, that was, in an ironic sense, the point of our American revolution and system of government, wasn't it? Putting into place permanent understandings of the human condition and the polity needed to regulate the government to keep calm, to keep 
peace, to keep blessings of liberty. But where is that calm? Gentlemen cry, peace, peace, but where is the peace? And what will make it better? The last question is perhaps the most important. Oh, sure, we could all just give up and surrender our views. We could just say, sure, nationalize the rest of health care, enact the Green New Deal, defund the police. While at it, might as well nationalize education and raise taxes to punish innovation and creativity and success and forbid gun sales. Use the Fifth Amendment or something to erase the Second Amendment. Tear down the barriers at the border because citizenship here doesn't mean anything anyway. We're just a piece of land without an ethos or ethic. And fully censor those who don't agree because might makes right. And don't let a silly set of things like millennial old beliefs guide your views on institutions like bathroom attendance or marriage and regulation of the flow of water, the size of your car engines, the temperature at which we can take baths and showers. Use all that to signal your willingness to outdo China and India and the rest of the world in its carbon emissions. Do you realize, without trying what I just described, every socialist and communist state that ever existed? Religion out, censorship in, government-run health care, government-mandated and run education, propaganda of the state, censorship, and no individual right to own guns or an individual right of anything of any kind, really. No real inherent right to private property. And if you're of the wrong race or class or ethnicity, you'll be criticized because there are no favored races and classes and ethnicities and disfavored ones. And there are always always these things in socialist enterprises be it a favored Aryan race in Germany or a favored class structure and nomenclature in the Soviet Union if you're lucky enough to be in it the rules you wish to impose on others apply not at all to you you see this in the green movement all the time what given the houses and transportation modes its most popular and famous spokesman deploy Harry Jaffa put it all this way for what else is the movement for consciousness raising but a renamed version of the demand for the socialist man. What is the conflict between the property rights of individuals and global environmentalism, but another chapter in the conflict between the bourgeois man and the socialist man? Diversity is demanded by those who will tolerate no deviation from the politically correct. And what is political correctness, but another name for the party line? It is Leninism, Stalinism, without Lenin or Stalin. Racism is the generic term for any kind of kind of false or formerly bourgeois consciousness, that is to say for any opinions not considered politically correct, has nothing to do with what was once called race prejudice, an unreasonable depreciation of other human beings because of their race, color, or ethnic origin. Charge of racism is made by the very people demanding racial quotas, race norming in the segregated racial and ethnic centers. To point out the contradiction in these demands, or indeed any demands made by the political correct, well, that's to bring on a new accusation of logism, which means the use of reason, a vice-held characteristic of those gripped by Eurocentrism. The, concept, the contempt for Eurocentrism as endemic vice corresponds closely to Marxist contempt for the false consciousness engendered in the ruling classes of all societies founded upon private property. Racism itself is then nothing but the endemic quality of human consciousness prior to the transformation of human egotism into human altruism. Political correctness is nothing less than the blind and willful insistence upon the fulfillment of the goals of revolutionary Marxist-Leninism without any reference to that failed enterprise itself or to any rational politics at all. Indeed, the new political correctness differs from its predecessor only in its insistence that no reason needs to be given as to why it is correct. It is a synthesis of the goals of Marxism with the philosophical or really anti-philosophical horizon of nihilism. But that is not what we were founded upon. That is rather what the progressives gave us. Our founders gave us permanent human nature and a people organized around fundamental truths. Progressives gave us the idea that there is no fixed human nature, that government can change man's nature, and that truths are not fixed, but at best, strongly held opinions. Some of us still like individual rights and recognize human nature, however imperfect it can be, as exactly that human and natural. Some of us still think socialism cannot work and that the individual rights of man were written long ago into the sunbeam that is human nature in Alexander Hamilton's beautiful phraseology. Some of us think, thought, 
Thoughts aren't crimes, but deeds are. And some of us resist efforts to turn the United States into the worst of all worlds, a country with Germany's immigration policies and Venezuela's economics. What causes the divide today? What causes a moral mantle to be placed only on one side of any debate? Ahistoricism, yes. Ignorance, yes. But don't neglect hardened ideology either. It will not do to just label it socialist, Marxist, reactionary, what have you. That is not enough. What must we do? Concede nothing. Take back lost ground. Do not be embarrassed. And in all that, use, as Lincoln said, reason. In his wonderful phraseology, the solid quarry of sober reason. Reason, cold, calculated, unimpassioned reason. That is what will furnish all the materials for our future support and defense. Let those materials be molded into general intelligence, sound morality, and in particular, a reverence for the Constitution and the laws. It matters because America matters, and we shall never shrink from saying so. I'm Seth Leibson. Be right back. <laughs>